Hello guys, today I want to showcase one pull request to the free open source Laravel IO portal as an example of how to create a pull request, of how to work with API with Sanctum, and how to write automated tests for that. So there is Laravel IO, the community portal, with its full code available for free on GitHub, and the portal has one of the features is articles. So there are articles that people can post here. And also a new thing that I've noticed on Twitter recently, Luke Downing decided to suggest a feature to have API for posting the articles from elsewhere, not directly from the portal. And he suggested it, not just by requesting a feature, but by submitting a pull request to the repository. And we will review it in this video because I think one of the best ways to learn development is actually read other people's code and analyze why they did it this way or that way. So if we go to pull request and click files changed, I will try to dissect that pull request into various parts that are important. So we have articles controller, which was present before for web articles controller. And what was added here is the article resource for API and store article now is possible from the API which means we need to check whether the request came from API or from the web. And this is the main thing. We can check if request wants JSON, which means it has a header called accept application JSON, then we return the API resource. Otherwise, we redirect visually. And if you are curious about the difference between dispatch now and dispatch sync, I found a Laracast topic with pretty clear answer on that, and I will link that in the description below. And elsewhere in the same controller, we're doing the same logic. So we check if the request wants JSON, then we return the JSON, right? So we use the same controller, the same web controller. Luke decided to not create a separate API controller, but rather use the same one and check for the JSON or not. Same is happening in the delete method. And that article resource make, this one that you can see is actually, if we scroll down a bit, here it is, the API resource file that returns the article with some related data if needed. Also, there are additional relationship resources like author resource and tag resource. So author resource, information about the author and tag resource, name and slack of the tag. For the authentication for that API, we use Laravel Sanctum with tokens, and there's a separate feature to get the token. So we have composer JSON Laravel Sanctum, Sanctum config file, and also in the user model, we have has API tokens from Sanctum. And also we have the controller to get the API token by user, we have API token controller that creates API token for a user, that create API token is a job. And also you can visually delete the API token, which is also a job if we navigate to that. So app jobs create API token, calls this user create token, and this is powered by Laravel Sanctum, and delete API token is also a function from Laravel Sanctum. Visually, you can manage those API tokens in resources, views, user settings, API tokens blade. You have for each user tokens and you can delete any token or in another route, settings, API tokens, store, generate a new token, which calls the same jobs that we discussed earlier. And also it is added to the settings. So there is a settings page for every user. So in addition to profile and password, now we have a new section of API tokens. And this is all in the routes files. So in the routes web, we add API token controller, the thing that we discussed just previously. And in the routes API, this is a bit untypical usage, but we use the same articles controller. So again, there's no separate API controller. It's the same App HTTP controllers articles, but in routes API PHP, which means that the URL, the endpoint of that will be slash API slash articles. And another interesting change in route service provider for security to prevent spamming, there was a limit change, rate limit, which is by default in route service provider, 60 requests per minute for the API calls. The author of Laravel IO Dries and the author of pull request Luke decided to decrease that to six per minute. Finally, this pull request contains also feature tests, automated tests that ensure that the feature actually works. So imagine the scenario, someone gives you the feature to your application and now you as an owner need to test that manually. So you need to dig deeper into the code, then click around and test if it works. So that's additional burden on you 
to do additional work to accept someone else's code and then support it in the future. To avoid that manual work and to increase the chances of your pull request being actually accepted and merged, automated tests is a great helper. That's if you're submitting a pull request or a feature to someone else's repository. But in general, even within your project, automated test is kind of like feature for yourself in the future. Instead of testing features manually later, you will have automated tests covering that. So what tests do we have? First, the syntax test is from PEST, which is an additional package by Nunu Maduro on top of PHP unit. And I have a quick review of that and I will link that in the description below what is PEST, but it's pretty similar to PHP unit actually. So what are we testing here? Users can generate API tokens. So log in as user, visit the settings and submitting the form and check if the page's settings again, redirected back and expect to have one token. And also users can delete API tokens. At the end, we check if the tokens are empty. Then we need to check that the users cannot delete another user's API token. So that's another test. And you can come up with scenarios that you want to test. It doesn't necessarily have to be like 100% test cover, so it's called, but basically test the most sensitive scenarios, those that if they go wrong, they would have pretty damaging impact on the project. So security things, money things, and permission things and stuff like that. And also article test, test for storing the article over API. So there are a lot of parameters here and a lot of assertions that everything comes with the correct values. Also can update article over an API, similar syntax, and can delete the article over API. And finally, as I said, some security things does not allow a guest to create or update also cannot update someone else's article or delete someone else's article and some defaults here. So that's a feature test and here's integration test. So to me personally, those namings of the kinds of tests like feature, unit integration, behavior tests and all of that, they're pretty confusing. So I see two types of tests basically, feature or unit. In feature tests, you actually call the API or web endpoints or URLs and test if they worked correctly. In the unit test, you call some internal function of the code, like a service class or something, and you check the result of that. So non-visual result. So here I would classify test integration more like unit tests, but you can challenge that. Different people call that and classify that differently. So here's an integration test that checks the job of API token creation. And also there's a test to test the job of deleting the API token here. So again, calling the job and checking the database result. And also for the security, again, deletion of someone else's API token should be forbidden. So there you go. This pull request by Luke is an example of how you would create a typical API CRUD, so to speak, to create and update the records and protect that by API by Sanctum. And also test that with automated tests. What do you think? Anything you would do differently here? Shoot in the comments below. And if you want another example of API with Sanctum, on my courses page at laravaldaily.teachable.com, one of the courses is about creating a mobile app with Flutter with Laravel API, which is also powered by Sanctum and tokens for the mobile application. So you can check out that course individually or subscribe to yearly membership to get all 24 courses at the moment. And I'm planning one course each month in 2022. And see you guys in other videos.